You can do a lot of policy-based administration and management within, like you can allocate a certain percentage of CPU, et cetera, uh, to your guest VMs. Uh, it also comes with great utilities for P2V and V2V conversion. What is P2V? It's basically P2V stands for physical to virtual and virtual to virtual conversion. So essentially what that means is if you have uh, ESX, VMware ESX based licenses, which are which can cost you thousands of dollars, you can actually use these utilities to convert your guest VMs from VMware, change your platform from VMware to Oracle VM, to uh, Zen based Oracle VM using these utilities and filling out a few prompts I've done it and save you a ton of money because Oracle VM is free. Um, this is a great diagram uh, that shows you the architecture of Oracle VM. Uh, as you can see on the top left side you have your Oracle VM manager repository. This in physical terms. that diagram yet. Oh you are not? Okay yeah that you're right. Um, it might be that uh, didn't switch right. yet. I forgot to. Sorry. Okay, there we go. Thanks. So this is uh, this is what I was talking about: the P2V and V2V, uh, and the policy-based administration and management for Oracle VM. Give you guys a moment to absorb. Okay. So I am going to quickly zip through the rest of the slides because our cluster is ready. Uh, for those of you who missed out on the Oracle VM sessions that were held in November and December, there are recordings available so you can actually go to brainsurface.com and view them on demand. So it took a total of 25 minutes and 49 seconds uh, to create our Oracle VM cluster as well as create a small cluster database called ORCL with the SID ORCL uh, within it. Now before I go ahead and do that I will quickly show you the out file and it will give it a little bit time to boot up the different daemons as well. Okay, so this was the progress-rack-ovm.out file. As you can see, I could have kept running it periodically while Bill Cluster was running. Uh, and it shows you the exact time. Uh, everything shows you the progress, 15, 1549 seconds. And it shows you that the creation of the cluster was successful. So let's switch back to the VNC console for the first node. And everything other than the GSD uh, processes is up and running on both virtual nodes, uh, which is normal. Uh, for 11G R2 for these demons not to run. And let's see, let's check on the status of our cluster database that it created. As you can see, it is running on both nodes. And As you can see from the configuration uh, that serves CDL shows you that it is ASM based. Um, so it is using those shared virtual ASM file based disks that we created initially. Uh, and it has two database instances running on each of the two respective nodes. Our listener is up and running. And
Okay. So you can see from SQL Plus that there are two fully configured, up and running clustered database uh, cluster database instances running on this virtual rack cluster, uh, and everything went fine uh, with just a small hiccup uh, initially, but. Basically, we demonstrated to you live today how to very easily set up a n number of node Oracle VM 11G R2 rack cluster using Oracle VM templates on Oracle VM. Tariq, if you want, just uh, real quickly, uh, there's just sort of two final questions um, to throw out there. One really quick one. Um, and I think pretty simple. The listener is running from the grid home, right? Not the database home? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, the listener. So I, uh, I, I'm thinking that that was the case, and somebody asked specifically. Um, and then uh, uh, there's actually a couple questions popping in. I'll just kind of, I'll, I'll, I'll read a few, of them and uh, we can hit them quickly. Uh, for this script and this uh, setup, when it did the grid infrastructure, did it create a separate grid user, or did it just create a single Oracle user and do everything under that user ID? It did. It created the Oracle user and did the install. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure. If you can post this question at the BrainSurface uh, at BrainSurface.com at the discussion. Uh, within the discussion section or the forum section, uh, session. Uh, the only ambiguity that I have in mind as far as answering that question is the build cluster runs as the root user. It's very important to run it as a root user. Now as part of the install process, it actually does create your Oracle user. Now the thing that I need to clarify, and I will get back to you if you can post that question, is that if it actually goes ahead and fires off the OUIs in the silent mode as the Oracle user or as the root user. Typically we are accustomed to of course doing it as the Oracle user rather than the root user. The only exception being the root.sh uh, and the post clusterware or post grid uh, install root.sh scripts that we have to run as yeah. the root user. So. Yeah, I'm pretty sure those would probably run as Oracle. This question was more if there are two Oracle users, though, one for the database and one for the. Um, and actually, just on the along the lines of that question, um, that was a new feature. I think it was new in 11.1 that you could have you can install the clusterware under a different user than the database. Mm -hmm. um, but initially, actually, a, a friend of mine here in Chicago was involved in the beta testing in San Francisco, and he. <laughs> just said, well, hey, I should just try this out. And uh, with one of the beta versions, he ran into a whole host of problems. So that was a brand new feature in 11.1. They were, of course, resolved by all of those problems before they officially released it. But just um, that, that is a relatively new thing. Uh, my guess would be that this script probably creates a single user then, just one Oracle user, not two. I would, I would tend but, to agree. All right, folks, uh, we are right about at the end of our time slot. Uh, we've covered 75 minutes, and we've shown you live how to set up a two-node Oracle VM template rack cluster, uh, latest and greatest versions okay. of every component. Uh, go ahead, additional Jeremy. additional questions, you guys can take those back to the Brain Surface website, too. There are a few more coming in, but we don't have time to answer all of them. But take them back to the, the Brain Surface website. Um, there's some forums and some different places you can post questions there. Thanks, Jeremy. Uh, for all of you, uh, we still have another expert level session uh, in this conference, which will be held on the 27th next Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Before I let you go, uh, I just want all of you to know that Jeremy and his wife are expecting their very first baby. And it's due any time now. Actually, yesterday was the due date. So please wish him luck. All right, with that, uh, we are going to end our session. Thank you, and you have a great day.